Let's take a look at some aspects of multi-body modeling and drawings in Creo Parametric 7.0. I'm actually starting out here in the assembly because I'm going to, or actually this is a part, it's a multi-body model. I'm starting out here in the part because I am going to do some setup first. And the very first thing that I'm going to do, and you'll see why later, is rename the different bodies. You'll see that here we have body one, body two, body three, so forth and so on. I'm going to go about renaming them. So I will click on one of the bodies and then hold down the right mouse button and then choose the rename command. And this is going to be my base. And now I am just going to repeat that for the other different bodies in here. All right, I've got all my bodies renamed in here. The next thing I'm going to do before I go into a drawing is to make sure that my mass properties are calculated. I have my model properties icon in my quick access toolbar. Let's go to mass properties over here and click change. Let's click the calculate button. And this way it gets the results for the entire assembly over here. I keep on saying assembly. This is a multi-body part. I am going to have to change my way of thinking. And similarly, you can go to any of the different objects over here and take a look at the mass property settings to see the values that they have uh, calculated in here for that Pro MP mass. All right, let's click the OK button out of that one. And the last thing I'm going to do before jumping over to the drawing is to create a cross-section. Cross-sections support multi-body. In part mode, you'll go to the View tab and then choose Section. And based on my default coordinate system, I want a cross-section in the Z direction. That looks good, except I want to show a hatch pattern. And I like to have, it have the same color at the cross-section. Let's go to the Properties tab and rename this to Cross-section A. Everything else in here looks good. One thing I want to point out is now in part mode for a cross section, there is a bodies tab over here. And the default is to include all bodies, but you could choose instead to include or exclude selected bodies. So this is much like I believe the tab is called components in assembly mode. Let's click the check, bar, check button to complete the cross section. I'm going to go down to it in the tree over here, and then if I right-click on it underneath Edit Actions, this is where we can edit the hatching, and you'll notice that it is applying settings for a given body, so I can select a body, and I like my cross-hatching to be a bit denser for when I use it in the drawing. Let's hit the Apply button, and let's do that for this body over here as well. Make it a little denser, hit the apply button. Let's take this one and make it denser. I kind of don't like the angle. Let's see. Eh. There, that looks better to me. Let me hit the apply button. And then this one over here. Again, let's just make it a little denser. All right, so that is good. So you can see that we have different cross hatching for each individual body in here. So now I've got everything set up in my model. Let's create our new drawing. I'll go to the new button, change the type radio button to drawing. And normally I would fill out a name and everything, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna create a drawing using my standard format. Let's hit the okay button out of here. I'm gonna use the master representation it's prompting me which sheet of my format I want to use. I want sheet one. And this has a bunch of other different parameters for filling in the title block and revision block. And I just hit the enter key to cycle through them. Let's take a look over here. I don't need to see all those different columns in the model tree. Let's create our first view. I will right click and then choose general view. I'm gonna do no combined state. And let's locate it about there on the drawing sheet. Let's change this to, let's see, I probably my front view will work. Let's try that. Yep, that's good. Scale is a little small. Let's see. Let's see if I can do a scale. What would 0.5 look like? There, that's good. And now let's go to the sections over here and then we can select 2D cross section and hit the plus sign. 
I can apply cross section A in this view. That's good. Let's click the OK button. And now I've got everything hatched on here. Let me turn off my coordinate system display. So there you can see the various different bodies with their different cross hatching in the model. So the important takeaway there is that you can have different hatching for different bodies in here. And uh, you can edit the hatching. I always do it in part mode. I just find it a lot easier to do there. Let's take a look over here, and I'm going to expand bodies over there. I want to point out that we have our various different bodies, and this one over here has a different symbol for it or a different glyph here. It's a little dashed. That means that I set that as a construction body. So construction bodies do not contribute to your mass properties or bill of materials. Let's take a look at how you can control the display of different entities on here. I can say, hey, you know what? Maybe I don't want this particular body to appear in the drawing. So I can right click on it. And then we can choose to hide in the model and it is no longer visible. You can see it's also grayed out in the bodies tree. If I want to bring it back, just right click on it and show in model. And that way we are seeing that particular body in the different drawing views. Another couple additions that they have in here, tables. If I go to the tables tab and then the tables drop down, you have quick tables over here. And I'm just gonna scroll down, or actually I'm already scrolled down in the list. Uh, here you can see that we have you know, a bunch of the different standard tables that you had in Creo Parametric 6.0 and earlier. And there are a couple new ones in here for the bodies. Here you can have bodies with a description and it's growing in the downward direction. And here you can have bodies with a description, but this one grows in the upward direction. Let's do a downward one. Oops, there we go. And I dropped it over there. Let me grab it and move it about over here. So you'll see that we have this filled in automatically. It's got an index number. It's got the names of the various different bodies. That's why I renamed the bodies uh, before I create the drawing. And here we have the various different body materials. Here I have this particular body. Let's go back over to the part. I'm going to right click and choose open. And now let's take this particular object and I can right click and I'm going to unset as construction. Now when I hop back over to my drawing, you'll notice that it is now updated to have six different bodies listed inside of here. So this is one of the predefined tables that now come in drawing mode. Let's take a look at if you wanted to set up your own repeat regions. So I'm going to create a table manually. And in my table, I'm going to have, let's see, four columns and two rows. And I'm just going to drop it about over here. Now I'm going to do some work to just set the widths up the way that I want them to and fill in some title header information. Okay, so I have my header row filled out and I've adjusted the column widths in this particular table. Now let's set up a repeat region. I'll go to repeat region, add, and it's prompting me to locate the corners of the region. And you'll do this as you would normally do for a bill of materials. Then I will click the done button out of here. Now, when I double click in a cell, I can put in my information. And just like before in a, an assembly bill of materials, you can use a report index. I'll double click in here. There are some new report symbols now that support multi-body. So let's go to MDL, which is for model. And here we can put the body and then name. For the material, I'm going to put in MDL, model, body, PTC material. And here you see all the different various PTC material parameters. And you're going to use a new one called PTC reported material. And lastly, for this particular cell over here, let's put in model body and then this is going to be user defined i'm going to use the standard pro mp mass and that's good let's update tables 
And there you see the tables filled out with all our body information. We've got the index number, we have our bodies listed in here, we've got our different materials that were assigned and the masses of the different components. So again, those are some of the different things that you have now in drawings for supporting multi-body, such as the cross-hatching for different bodies, as well as the ability to toggle the visibility using the bodies tree and the quick table that's provided to you and the additional repeat region parameters that you can use. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.